Hi, I'm Cicely Rose, a student advisor here at Career Foundry. Today I'm going to explain a very important aspect of user experience design, information architecture. Information architecture, or IA, is the science of organizing and structuring content in a logical, user-friendly way. If you're designing a website or an app, the information architecture has a huge impact on how easy it is to navigate. So, if you want to create a great user experience, you'll need to understand the principles of information architecture. In this video, I'll talk you through exactly what information architecture is and why it's so important. Then I'll show you how to define the information architecture of your website. Ready? Let's go. First and foremost, what is information architecture? Information architecture has roots in both library science and cognitive psychology. When designing the information architecture of a website or app, you can think of yourself as a digital librarian. Just as a real librarian organizes books, you are organizing content across a digital product. Essentially, you're asking what information should go where? Which elements are most important and should be given priority? Good information architecture contributes to a positive user experience. As consumers, we're accustomed to finding exactly what we need quickly and easily. If a site's tricky to navigate, we'll soon give up and move on. So it's absolutely crucial that the information architecture is logical and user-friendly. This includes making sure that each page or screen is structured in a way that makes it easier for the user to achieve their goal. When defining the information architecture, it's important to think about different types of users and how they will navigate, search or use filters. Let's imagine you're designing an e-commerce website. Some users may already have a specific item in mind, say new shoes for a job interview. To find relevant items as quickly as possible, they might filter by style, color or shoe size. Another user might just be looking for inspiration, in which case they'll want to browse and potentially see some curated styles. The information architecture should accommodate different user needs, helping the customer to reach their desired destination as quickly and seamlessly as possible. Information architecture also considers the overall navigation of the site, making sure that the user's journey from one page to another is logical. In a nutshell, information architecture ensures that things are where they should be, creating a pleasant user experience that doesn't require the user to think too hard. So, logical information architecture equals good UX. With that in mind, let's take a look at the processes involved in information architecture. When it comes to designing a digital product, like a website or an app, the information architecture serves as the foundation. So where do you start? Before getting stuck into the information architecture itself, you first need to create an IA document. This can be done in four simple steps, which I'll take you through now. Step one, define the company goals. From a business perspective, what should the information architecture achieve? Some typical goals include making more money, reducing costs, or helping customers to make better decisions. It's also important to consider whether there are any constraints that affect these goals. Get together with all key stakeholders and outline some clear objectives. Step two, define the user goals. Who will be using the product? What are these users going to do on the website? And what do they hope to achieve? In true UX fashion, you'll need to conduct user interviews and create personas. Once again, you'll need to think about any constraints users may have. Step three, do some competitor analysis. Before you define your own information architecture, take a look at what your competitors are doing. Where do they display their information? Are their websites easy to navigate? What are some of their strengths and weaknesses? Analyzing similar products on the market will give you an idea of what your customers expect. And step four, define your content. When working with information architecture, you'll either be redesigning an existing website or creating one from scratch. If a website already has content, Go through and decide what to keep and what to get rid of. If you're short on time and resources, just focus on the most important parts of the website. In other words, higher level content. At this point, you'll also note down any new content that needs to be added. You should end up with a comprehensive content inventory. That's all the prep work done. Now you can actually start to design your information architecture. How? Let's find out. Now I'm going 
going to show you step by step how to design the information architecture of a website. Throughout the process, be sure to involve the people who actually create the content. With their help, you'll create a high level overview of the content before adding in the finer details. So, without further ado, let's jump in. Step one, group the content. In the preparation phase, you came up with a content inventory. Now it's time to categorize and prioritize all the content on this list. The goal here is to group similar content together in order to come up with logical menus. This is a great time to conduct some card sorting sessions. Card sorting is a participatory design technique which shows us how users group different items. First, you'll pick a set of topics based on the content you want to include on your website. You'll write a different topic on each card, shuffle the cards into a random order, and then ask the user to sort them into piles. The aim of card sorting is to get users to group information in a way that makes sense to them. This helps you understand your users' mental models. In other words, how they expect a certain system to be structured. After a few card sorting sessions, you'll start to get an idea of how your content should be grouped. Step two, create a sitemap. Based on the content groups you've come up with, you'll now create a sitemap. A sitemap is basically a visual representation of all the different content areas on your website. It looks like a family tree and establishes a content hierarchy. You'll have parent pages and child pages. For example, at the top level, you might have a home page. A child page of this parent page could be the About Us page. Then you might have another child page stemming from the About Us page, such as Company Mission or Meet the Team. Step three, outline the navigational structure. With your sitemap in place, it's time to think about how the users will get from A to B. The site navigation comprises a collection of UI elements that are connected in a meaningful way, such as menus, breadcrumbs, and filters. The navigational structure sets out all the possible pathways the user might take to get to each page. For example, via the main navigation or the footer. Step four, refine your content labels. By now, you know where your content will live and how your users will find it. The next step is to label your content. Labels tell the user what they can expect to see when they click. So make sure they're accurate, meaningful and concise. It's also important to think about the overall tone of the brand. So you'll need to collaborate closely with the content team. Step five, create wireframes and conduct user testing. Your work is almost complete. Good job. You've established what content needs to be included on your website, how it should be grouped and interlinked, and what each content group should be called. To round off the process, you'll create wireframes and conduct user testing. There are several methods you can use to test your information architecture such as card sorting, tree testing, and click testing. By testing early and often, you'll ensure that the final design is user-friendly, logical, and easy to navigate. All crucial components of good UX. So there you have it, a complete introduction to information architecture. To learn more about the UX design process, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.